Hey guys, Pat here from Rain Country Homestead. God is good all the time. Last few days I've been working on a little project for Mrs. Rain. Uh, she likes to sit on the floor and work on her videos, do research and book work and all kinds of different things. She likes to sit on the floor in front of the couch. And so I'm trying to make things a little more ergonomically friendly for her. And so I'm building a little multitasking stool. And the stool can act as a little tiny table for grandbabies. This can be used as a step stool and a little workstation for Heidi. She's got a separate keyboard for a computer that she likes to sit down here and just do her uh, video editing and stuff like this. And then she projects the computer onto the screen of the big, the big television that we have in the living room. So it's uh, easier on her eyes. This is going to be a little more ergonomically pleasing for her wrists, make her job just a little bit easier. At any rate, um, I was wanting to take you guys through how I put this together. So I, I got some fur and milled it up on the, on the saw. And these boards here were a little wider than 7 inches wide. And I made this a full inch and an eighth thick. And so when I... So when I planed this down, it was a good thick one inch board. So what I did is I, I made four of these four of these small boards like this. And here's the ends that uh, came off of there if you're curious as to how it how it all looked to begin with. And so everything everything on here is measured at sit at either 90 degrees or 10 degrees. This angle here, this angle here that runs flat across is 10 degrees because in order for this to be level or flat with the ground when I bring the leg out like this to 10 degrees for instance when it goes from 90 degrees this way to 90 degrees this way on this cut then this edge right here would be the only thing touching the floor so we also have to cut this off at 10 degrees as well so this is 10 degrees cut on the end board, and this is also 10 degrees cut on the top of this end board. This face here is cut 90 degrees. This base portion right here, I made this out of cedar, and all the cuts are made 10 degrees as well to follow this slope down. So it's 10 degrees this cut, 10 degrees this cut. The top is 90 degrees on this edge and 10 degrees on this edge and when I butt these two together of course this is 90 degrees where I glued those together clamp these together with the bar clamps that you see over here and let that dry and then I just I sanded everything down and rounded the corners at seven inches from seam to edge and I have to measure this on the long face because I have to measure between this point and this point to get my total length because it'd be too short from this point to that point because these are cut at a 10 degree angle. We'd start out at 15 and a quarter and by the time I got done sanding and everything it was 15 and 3 16 Two boards at, at 7 inches by 15 and a quarter or 15 and 3 16 it really doesn't matter. Now we're going to have four of these boards here. So again, you probably you might not be able to see the seam, but there's a seam in here that goes clear down through here. So basically what you see from here on over is just a mirror image of this piece right here. So I have four end pieces. So two like this and two like this. So that makes a total of four. So eight and a quarter by seven and you need four of these. Now you may be wondering how I made made the heart in here. What we tend to do is we keep some uh, old cereal boxes and what I did is I determined how big I wanted to make the shape and then off of the straight edge of this board I drew in top and bottom. I wanted the heart to come in a certain amount and then I just drew a pencil line of how I wanted that heart to look and cut that out with a pair of scissors. I lined up the edge of the template to the inside of that board 
and it's drew a line. That's before I assembled this piece and this piece together. Each individual board I took and I traced this shape so far down from this point to this point and just lined up this line on the line across here that's been been sanded down now and then I just drew and duplicated my line so here's a random end cut that I have so let's say I wanted to drop down from the top of that board two inches which is this measurement here this is a two inch square from the top of the template down to where that line is all I'd have to do is just line up the top of the template to the top of the board and then the edge of the template to the edge of the board and likewise on the bottom just lining up the bottom of the template on the bottom of that board and then when I line that up I could put that against the straight edge which is a lot more accurate and also easier so with the board up against any straight edge like what you see here I can just line up those edges hold it down and just trace my line around and then I can just take this and go cut it on the bandsaw so here we are at the bandsaw and uh, I'll go ahead and get this cut out and I'll show you how, to, how I sanded that down Now we're over at the drill press and I just used these little drum sanders. This happens to be a two inch drum sander. That just goes into your table or your drill press. Then I just go in and sand it down. When I make different shapes like this, I try to be cognizant of how big this radius is right here so I have different size drum sanders that I use but I like it I like this two inch one here when you're sanding you want to sand with the grain this way that way it's a lot smoother when it's in its sanding rotation if it's sanding against this it's going a it's kind of peeling away at the fibers a little bit harder so when I sand I like to go with the grain so when this is rotating around this way it's nice and smooth a little bit smoother than if, if the sandpaper was grinding against this way. So then I flip it over and sand this way to follow the grain pattern coming around. So that's how I make this shape here. So I have a couple of circles and a couple of different shapes that I've cut, cut out for different projects uh, over the years. So how I made the bottom of this is I glued these two together and I thought, well, I'll, I'll come in here three and three quarters of an inch and make a little mark. So from this edge to this edge, I measured three and three quarters of an inch. And then I went from this edge to this edge and measured three, quarter, uh, three and three quarters of an inch. And then what I did is I came in here with what I thought looked good. First, I came in with this, this circle and... I went to just where that mark was and then just to where this other mark was laid it on top just to where I could see the marks on the edges so this shape or this circle between this point and this point it was the circle was exactly centered I drew an arc I thought well I want that a little bit deeper so I have a smaller circle and I laid that on top of those three and three quarter inch marks and drew a circle and I said oh, I like that a little better so that's how I came up with this and then I just took this over on the bandsaw and cut that out just like you seen me do with this shape here and then took that over to that two inch drum sander and sanded it down so that's how I got the different shapes and I I did something similar to this 
With this here, I went to the center of this piece and then drew my drew my shapes out. That gave me center of this side piece. This, this piece right here is going to go right on the side. Before I did all these shapes here, I cut this piece out here, this piece out here, the same with the other side. Then I put the heart shape in. Then I glued it together. Then I cut this shape out last. Sanded down the edges with, with a sanding block. With just sandpaper and by hand, I went around and, and sanded on the inside just to take the sharp edge off of the edge of the edge of the piece. So there are three pieces of equipment that I used to make those angles. And one is the table saw. The second one was this uh, band saw behind me. And then the other is a radial arm saw. And then the third thing was is a uh, compound miter saw. Now you can make these cuts with a skill saw. You can make these cuts with a saber saw or a jigsaw. And you can also also cut them with a, a hand saw. Okay guys, let's just say that we uh, we started out with an edge that looks like that. Uh, again, this is uh, some fur that I had come across and I just worked, I just cut slabs off of it on the on the uh, on the mill. Now let's just say you have a piece of wood that has a rough edge like this. Well, I go and take a straight edge and I just make a mark right along that edge to where it's it's going to have have clean wood on the inside. Now I can do one of two things. I can take it through the bandsaw and I can cut this off. I can cut it off straight. And of course I do that after I run this through the thickness planer and make sure that all this is nice and smooth. After this is thickness planed and I can run right along that edge here avoiding all the breaks and splits and whatnot and run a line down through that and then either cut this freehand this on a table saw which I encourage you guys to always follow your safety protocol on your instructions on your booklets so uh, that you get from your your operators manuals and uh, you know take what I say with a grain of salt but this is just what I do I can run the fence back and freehand this through the bandsaw and cut right along that line then I'd come over to the joiner and then run that milled edge through the joiner and then end up with a nice smooth side like this now I have a good square side to deal with in order to make my end cuts in order to get the square side I come over to the radial arm saw and you can see that I have the blade tilted at a 10 degree angle and that's how I get my angles for my end cuts for my boards. Now you can also do that with a miter saw. It has an articulating head on it this way. But uh, this will only cut so, so deep. So I have this set up for 90 degree cuts, which is no big deal to change that. I just went ahead and set the radial arm saw up for a 10 degree cut. I want to continue that same slope on the top side. So I measured out how far that I wanted to come this way with a tape measure. So keep in mind we're making we're making a half of this whole leg here right now uh, or something similar to it. So we've got one side cut. Now we want to cut the bottom side. So I established that I want to come at uh, I got this at 8 and 3 sixteenths. So I measured over 8 and 3 sixteenths. Now I have these cuts made. I went ahead and cut all of these cuts all at once to streamline time. So then I came in and I wanted to figure out how I make this this angle. Well before I did all, all of this I wanted to make sure that I had the all the material that would fit the dimensions that I'd require. So I made sure I got seven inch boards. This centerpiece is going to have to be twice the width so we're trying to figure out the very top of this. We wanted to come to 11 and, a, 11 and an eighth. We figured out the distance between here and the edge and then took the angle down to the to the very bottom here. Or if, you, if you're wanting to start from the bottom and you know you only have seven inches, you figure out your angle. And I have a speed square here. 
and I can go to the very bottom you know let's just I'm gonna pretend that this is the proper width it's just a scrap piece of wood so it's not going to be it's not going to be as wide it's going to be less than seven inches so here we have on our speed score we got degrees this is zero clear to 90 degrees so we went to 10 degrees <clears throat> and we made a little pie shaped piece and to finish out the line we uh, just came back over on the other on the top side and finished out the line that's how we got our 10 degree 10 degree angle so in order to cut this again I could go freehand on the table saw I could actually set this up and turn the head of the radial arm saw to 10 degrees and make this cut or I could just cut this on the bandsaw how I cut this out is with the bandsaw so we'll go ahead and show you on that so here we are at the bandsaw and I just set the blade up Set the, just push the fence over and I'll just go ahead and follow that line I cut to the outer edge of that line to get more accuracy so then I took it to the joiner and cleaned that edge up now that gives me my finished smooth edge on the opposite side so now that's starting to take shape obviously it's supposed to be wider but the, again this is a scrap piece of wood so I have my angle here my 90 degree right angle at a 10 degree pitch my 90 degree angle for my glue edge and then my the bottom part of the foot made the shape half the heart half of the heart I cut that out as I showed you of course this bottom piece doesn't get cut out until both of these get assembled together so here we have little side support pieces now this shape here this this uh, 10 degree cut was made on the table saw and that's accomplished by setting the table saw up to 10 degrees this is actually 30 degrees so down here on the side of this delta contractor saw you just run the handle counterclockwise until you get to the 10 degree mark you lock the handle in place so it doesn't move on you and then when you have your blade set up to 10 degrees you measure over the tape measure however far you want to go with your skirt set your blade and then just run it run the piece through so you can get that that 10 degree cut so this will flare out to the side a little bit and be level on the top so the miter saw this is a 10 degree cut on the side so we set our miter saw off on the 10 degree so the handle has a little trigger that pulls up so I just go to the 10, 10 degree mark lock it in place and then just make make my cut wherever I want to and then you can flip it over like this and do the cut on the same side or you can move the miter over to the other 10 degree position and cut the other side if you'd like when I have this dimensionally cut I have this top at 10 degrees this beveled off at 10 degrees so it fits on there and everything everything flows the same this is a 10 degree cut on the leg a 10 degree cut on this a 10 degree cut on this so it's flat I want to put screws and also glue I want to glue this to the uh, the su this support here and then also to the leg and then also screw it in place and put dowel plugs in here so what I did is I went in one inch all the way along the face here that centered the the screw penetration to the center of the leg so when the screw goes into the, the countersink it's going to be centered into the middle of the support leg I drilled that in using a, a countersink so the screws I'm going to be using are some deck screws these are T25 Torx after countersinking these I wanted to get a drill bit that was actually just a little bit larger than the the biting portion of the screw so when I go to put this little side skirt on here the screw is not going to bite into this wood 
but it's going to bite into the wood on the back side. So the pre purpose for that is, is that there's nothing to keep the skirt from sucking in tight to the back side of the leg here. And so the screw and the glue is uh, going to be able to hold that tight against this leg here. So there won't be any, any gap exposed along this edge because the screw is actually just going to be biting into this piece and not this piece here. This worked out to where I'd come in one inch from the end on each end, one inch to there, three quarters of an inch from the edge in and three quarters from the edge from the bottom, one inch from the edge from the top and one inch from the bottom and did that the same on all four countersinks on both of these skirts. Now the other thing that I did is I also measured from the outside edge to the center and verified measurement for six and a half inches on both sides to the center and this piece ended up being three inches on the long side and what I mean by long side is it's tapered here so it's only like two and seven eighths on this side and then three inches on that side. So I got a, a board that was three inches long, or three inches wide, and 14 inches long. That's what you need for this. And then however deep you want to go, I this so happens to be a three quarter inch thick piece of wood. So now when I go to glue this up, I'm gonna go right to that seam. And so when I go to glue this up, there won't be any guesswork, I won't have to measure all I have to do is line up this small like little pencil mark to the center of the of the supporting piece that ties everything together and go to go to screw it together and glue it. Here is a tip that uh, that might come in handy. You guys may, may know about this, but maybe not. Is when I glued the legs together, I saved these little wedge shaped pieces to put in between the bar clamps. So the bar clamps had a, uh, a 90 degree edge to work off. When I clamped everything together, two things happened. One was this piece of wood, it kept it from marring the finished piece of woods. Because when you clamp this up, you know, it's going to dent the edge of the wood. So I didn't want that. It also helped to keep everything lined up and square. So that was the point in me using these little wedge shaped pieces and saving those is so I can I can use those to clamp this together while it's drying. Other than all the sanding that I had done, it's a long boring process. Uh, I got you all caught up to another phase of the assembly. When I assembled the two legs on the support piece, applied pressure down after gluing the inside edge of the support piece then I can center each leg up against the back side of that support piece and then I just took the staple gun and, and put four staples in there to hold and secure the legs to that support piece. After using the staples I didn't really have to do this but I took some small bar clamps three of them and with a soft face on them, I went ahead and clamped this together and let it dry overnight. So I used three bar clamps to clamp this together, one on each end and then one in the center, and that allowed me to let it dry overnight. So now I'm at the point where I can assemble these little side skirts and support pieces. So the best way I think is to do that is to flip this on its side, have gravity working for me a little bit, kind of hold that up there to where I know how far to go without putting glue on the exposed face of that leg. Just going to tap that just to hold that in place. I want to make sure that this edge is flat against the top of the top of the leg, flat across here and then flat on the top of this leg. So I got that screw, it's just holding. I'll just tap it in there with the hammer. Kind of helps it get started. 
come back over on this side and again uh, I lined up this little pre-engineered line here <laughs> to the uh, center of these two pieces of wood here. Now depending on what wood you use, it's a good idea to pre-drill. You know, you set this up here, maybe just tack your, your screws in place, but on, you know, just to hold this in place, but then pre-drill a small, using a smaller bit than what the inside of the shank shows, so you don't split this part here. So you sometimes sometimes it's a good idea to you know take a measurement on that inside of the threads take a drill bit that's the same size as the inside of the threads and pre-drill your legs so it doesn't split out on you I guess I was taking a chance by not doing that but uh, I felt pretty comfortable that this wood wouldn't split I got a full one inch here uh, if it was three quarters I definitely would have if you got a harder wood, you, mo you most definitely want to do that. Like with uh, oak or something like that, you definitely want to pre-drill. So we do the same to the other side. Uh, you could put a little pencil mark or something on here to uh, make it a little easier on myself. So now I just take a little bit of wood glue and apply it to the inside being careful not to get glue on the outside of my wood because I don't want to sand this anymore just a drop now I can put these little dowel plugs these little 3 8 inch dowel plugs I don't think I, I mentioned that earlier what size holes those were for my countersinks but they're 3 8 a 3 8 countersink and it helps to put them in the right way making sure they're in a square put them in as far as you can with your fingers and then just tap them okay and then we do the same on the other side these little dowel plugs are just tapered and they fit right into that right into those three inch holes okay that's finished now with the top I want it to be a smooth surface I can use fasteners on the top of it but I don't want to do that I want to have a seamless top what I mean is I don't want to have any dowel plugs or any fasteners showing on the other side so what I can do is I can run fasteners in here or I could just I can just glue the underside of this and then just use clamps and clamp it in place and allow it to dry so I think that's what I'm going to do. I don't, I don't necessarily need fasteners on this because that's a large area underneath there. That glue is going to set up and it's going to, it's going to be just as good as fasteners. So now what I do is I want to find the center of this between here and here. So I know where to find out where to place the top. I've already marked that on the top between this point and this point over here. I've marked the center bottom of the top piece if that makes any sense so this is the underside of the top that goes on here so what I've done I've got a mark here and I know there's a I know where the glue seam is on this side and the glue seam on the back side and I've also marked the center on the opposite side from this point what I have to do now is to follow my line my little center line so I want to follow that across because now it's going to be hid and subdued I'm just going to put a tiny mark right there on the face so I can line this mark up with this mark this is already denoted for me because the glue joints right here and then I'm going to line that up with that glue joint right there so I need to find the center of the edge of the skirt now I'm ready to glue so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put glue all over the top of this instead of all over the top of this so I know where all my contact points are on this so I don't have to worry about messing up the under portion of the top
trying to be a little bit careful on the edges here uh, to minimize that glue squirting out the side it's kind of a touchy feely thing to figure out just how much glue that you put out there to where it's going to hold but uh, not so much that you have too much I just take some quick clamps lightly put it on there first because there might be some minor adjustments I need to make and just by putting them on there light that will allow me to adjust the other side okay I have the seam all the seams lined up and I have all my pencil marks lined up now I can make sure that these are all tight look around make sure that all my seams are good well now i can just let it dry okay guys it's the next day and i'll let this sit all night so i'm going to unclamp it it's uh probably still a little bit wet on the inside so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take this in for the rest of the day inside the house things dry a little slow out here so what i'll do is i'll take it inside and let it warm up over the course of the night and part of the next morning and then go ahead and start putting the finish on it well hello everyone heidi here Patrick forgot to shoot the ending to this video, so I figured who best to shoot it but me, the one he made it for. And it's been a few weeks since he finished it, so I've been using it every day. I really love it. I love the look of it all together. You can see this little heart design there. I told him he didn't have to make it fancy, but, you know, Patrick likes to make things nice for me. So how I use it is I typically I'll have my mouse pad and my mouse sitting here. And sometimes I'll sit my keyboard this way because my keyboard, even though I use a laptop, I have a separate keyboard that I plug into it that so I can either sit the keyboard on my lap or sit it here. Usually I'll sit it this way, which doesn't sound like it makes sense. It just depends on what I'm doing. If I'm typing, I'll lay it in my lap and type. I could also lay it across this way if I want, but I, I don't usually use it that way because usually it's sitting off to the side this way as I'm sitting on the floor. Because yes, I'm a floor sitter, as Patrick should have said earlier in this video. And that is because with most furniture, since my feet don't touch the ground because I'm so short, it can be really hard on my lower back so I can sit on the floor and it is more comfortable for me than sitting at the table and doing it. So anyway, I'm usually sitting this way, kind of beside this and running it this way. And then mostly when I'm editing videos, I only need my number keypad. And that's why oftentimes I might have the keypad, the keyboard sitting here and then just type in the numbers as I need it. And then of course, when I need to type in text, lay it in my lap and just do it that way. And then I also have extra space for setting my coffee mug and then one of my homemade little coasters. I have plenty of room to do that or even if I have my keyboard sitting there. This mouse pad uh, is new. I, I'm uh, not used to one being so long, but it will still work this way. I can put the mug there. But anyway, I do want to set that on a coaster so I don't damage this at all because I'm loving this thing so much. But yeah, anyway, it, it is working perfect. I love this. I'm very grateful Patrick made this for me. And one more thing I wanted to show is he did this just for looks. Even though I'm typically sitting cross-legged on the floor, every once in a while I do like to stretch my legs out. And I also, by the way, use this for when I'm packing up seeds to go up on our store. So I'll take, I'll, you know, take this off and then have my seed pack sitting here, marking them and all that. And if my legs get tired of sitting cross-legged and I want this right in front of me for doing something like that, then my legs actually fit perfectly right here because of the shape of this. And then I can stretch my legs out for a little while that way. So it's a, that's just a little added thing that uh, his little, his little uh, artsy thing that he did here, he wasn't even thinking about that, but it works perfect. Anyway, well, I hope you enjoyed Patrick's video on how to make a stool slash desk. And uh, if nothing else, it might be something you can use just to make a stool, even, even if you're not weird like me and like to sit on the floor and, and want a short little desk next to you. All right, well, thanks for watching. Take care, and God bless.